Hello, my name is Olga. I am a PhD student at Ca Fosca University, uh, Venice, Italy, and uh, at the same time at the Museum of Natural History in Paris, France. I am studying ethnobotany of post-Soviet space, and currently I am working in the project uh, which is funded by ERC, and it is entitled Ethnobotany of Divided Generations uh, in the Context of Centralization. It involves uh, several fieldwork sites, which are located on the borderlands, uh, starting in the north uh, from Finland and Russia, uh, Karelia, and the second location is the border of Estonia and Russia. The third uh, is the borderland of Belarus, uh, Lithuania and Poland, and the fourth one is located in Bukovina, the border of Ukraine and Romania. part of the same project that was described by Julie in her video, but my fieldwork site is located farther to the north. It is located in Petersky district of Pskov Oblast. I am studying Setu people, the Finno-Ugric people, who gave name to this land Setuma. During the 20th century, uh, this land was separated first by the administrative border and later by the state border, so that some families are divided across the state border. Some of them live in Estonia and another part of the family live in Russia. research focuses on the ethnobotany of the local population. I am trying to understand the changes that happened to the use of wild plants in Seto and local Russian communities in the last several generations. I am also interested in the human-plant relationship in general, and I would like to show which ideas, narratives and policies caused the change. Things to consider here are not only the socio-economic features like the creation of centralized collective farming, education and medical assistance infrastructure, but also, to name a few, the popularization of literacy and reading, the philosophy of dialectical materialism that governed the scientific research, the ethnic policies and many other factors. All this caused the transformation of the system of local ecological knowledge, including the change in perceiving nature, forests and wetlands. This video is made not in Setuma, but still farther to the north, in the Inigradskaya oblast, at the bog that is called Sestraretskaya. It is unique because during 20th century it avoided the human transformation, so it has never been used neither for peat harvesting, neither for amelioration. Probably this happened thanks to the fact that it was located first on the border between Novgorod lands and Swedes, and later on the land that bordered Russia and Finland. Currently, this is a natural reserve and since 2011, there has been installed a special hiking path for those who are interested in the local wetlands. Wetlands are the most biologically diverse landscapes that are characterized by specific flora that is adapted to the soil saturated by water. Depending on the type and location, the functions of wetlands vary from water purification and storage, to processing of carbon, to stabilization of shorelines, and support of plants and animals. The majority of Russian wetlands are mires rich in peat that makes 47% of the world reserves of peat. Depending on the water source, the mires are called bogs 
that are fed only from precipitations, or fans, that are usually located next to other bodies of fresh water. The majority of the Sestraretsk Reserve is represented by raised bogs, while the trail comes across various landscapes – grass bog, densely growing willow tree bushes, and black alder swamps. The raised bog is covered with quite characteristic sphagnum moss, heather, and dwarf pine trees. Islands of larger pines grow on the ancient dunes of the Littorina Sea that preceded the Baltic Sea between 7 to 4,000 years ago. The pools of water are surrounded by sedges and feature water lily, Nymphia candida. Bogs and the pine forests surrounding them are cherished by locals for berries growing there – cranberries, bog bilberries, cloudberries, and lincolnberries. The landscape of the whole Scandinavia and Northwest Russia is defined by the movement of a glacier that happened several thousand years ago at the beginning of Holocene. Majority of swamps in this territory appear due to this event. Setoma represents an interesting case from the point of view of landscape. The wetlands there alternate with uplands, whose soils are rich in limestone and clay. In Pechori district there are several mires. The Starizborsky Mire belongs to a nature reserve Starizborsky, founded in 1979 and not only featuring extremely rich flora, but also heritage sites such as the fortress of Izborsk of 14th century. Unlike the Sestoresk bog, this wetland suffered from pit excavation. In addition, in Soviet era, due to the lack of pastures for private cattle, the grasslands surrounding the mire were used as such. Nowadays, there is no active agricultural activities, and the diverse plant communities, as well as the red-listed flora, are protected. One can find here several species of sedges, Carex paniculata and Carex hostiana, beautiful orchids, two species of Dactylochrysa, as well as Swerchia perennis and Saxifrage Saxifraga hercules. The local flora is unique to Pskov region, thus attracting close attention of the researchers. Why the Myers were so aggressively transformed in the past and up to the present days? The perception of wetlands has long been defined by the ideas of what the nature should be and what it shouldn't be. The wetlands were considered useless and therefore it was possible and even desirable to intervene into their organization. In the medicine of 19th century, the wetlands were considered dangerous and emanating foul, unhealthy air, so-called miasma, causing all sorts of illnesses that are now mostly attributed to infections. As was shown by German historian Katja Bruisch, the swamps and mires were considered a mistake of the nature, as they did not bring timber, neither were they suitable for plant cultivation. So it was the task of humans to try to correct this mistake and to obtain peat from them and to turn wetlands into the agricultural land. This idea persisted up until late 20th century. Of course, Russia was not the only country concerned about the wetland drainage, but it is true that, at some point, drainage there went on exceptional scale. While the first experiments started in 19th century, the golden age of land melioration started after 1965, when the Ministry of Land Reclamation and Water Management was established. It governed about 90 research institutes, as well as about 400 construction enterprises. The total number of employees amounted to 1.7 million people. 
by 1990, more than 2 million hectares of mires were drained. In Pskov Oblast, in 1986, about 230,000 hectares were drained, which constitute 14% of the cultivated land. However, the drained land needed constant maintenance, and after the collapse of the USSR it was mainly discontinued. Currently, only 14% of drained lands across Russia are still in good condition. Although uh, the industrial peat extraction has stopped several decades ago at Staryzborskaya Mire, there is a still a uh, controversy about it, despite the fact that the territory is uh, under protection. The local population are still relying a lot on the subsistence agriculture and they cannot access uh, as much land plot as their neighbors who live further from the nature reserve. According to our field data, the amelioration is perceived by them as something beneficial as it helps to gain more agricultural land and land for pasture. At the same time, the same, uh, at the same time, uh, some land plots that are located further from the reserve in the vicinity could help to solve their problems. In the conclusion of my presentation, I would like to stress uh, the importance of studying the voices of the locals and uh, not only uh, take into account the view of experts, but also the point of view of the locals. It is key not only to transmit the expert point of view, but also to hear the local voices to educate the people if needed and to adjust the initial plan when it's needed. Mm -hmm.